Hey guys, in this particular video I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the reaction forces for a simple truss. Now this truss is fairly simple in the sense that all the lengths of its members are all one meter, and we're going to assume that the mass of this entire truss is so small it can be considered zero. So to make this problem a little bit more interesting, let's consider an external force on point C acting downwards of 20 kilonewtons. Right, and my question to you is, find find the reaction forces. Find the reaction forces. Okay, have a shot at this yourself first. If you can't do it, that's okay, but it's really important you have a shot. Okay, in order to do this, we first need to create a free body diagram. So let's do that. Our free body diagram will look something like this, except I haven't drawn the forces and external torques on this yet. Remember, a free body diagram draws only external forces and external torques. So I've already given you one. We know that one external force will be downwards of 20 kilonewtons, right? But we'll also have external forces at point A and E because it's generally good convention to replace the supports with external forces. And in order to do that, we need to know what these types of supports are. So this right here at point A is something we call a pin support. That's what we call a pin support. And this right here at point A, E, sorry, is something we call a roller support. Roller support. Right? And what's so crazy about a pin support is the fact that it manages to prevent both horizontal and vertical movements simultaneously. So that means you're going to have two reaction forces at point A. You're going to have a reaction force in your vertical direction, which I'll call A subscript Y. That's your force in your vertical direction. And you're going to have this force in your horizontal direction, which I'll call A subscript X. A roller support, like I mentioned before, only prevents movement in the vertical direction. So you're only going to have some reaction force EY in the vertical direction to make sure that this thing doesn't move off this, off this solid block that this roller is resting on. All right, now we're almost there. All we need to do now is create an axis so we can define what we mean by positive and negative. So I'm going to define positive to the right as our X. So this is going to be what I call x, and I'm going to define upward as being positive y. Okay, now we're ready to get into the maths of all this. First of all, we need to recall a few formulas. Remember, you're going to recall one formula, which is the sum of forces is equal to zero, which can be broken down into the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero, and the sum of forces in the y direction must be equal to zero. We also know that the sum of torques around any point must be equal to zero as well. You might have noticed that these three formulas here are slightly different from the formulas we use in dynamics. The ones we use in dynamics are the sum of forces in your x direction is equal to mAx, and the sum of forces in your y direction is equal to mAy, and we also use in dynamics later on in the course the sum of torques around any point is equal to the moment of inertia around that point times the angular acceleration. Right? And you may be wondering how you manage to reconcile these differences. The fact is, they're actually derived, this top line is derived from the bottom line under the special case that the truss is not moving, by which I mean it's not accelerating in any direction. So this is going to be zero, and the truss isn't going to be rotating around any point either. So that means that's going to be equal to zero as well, leaving us with what we've got above. It's always good to keep in mind how these formulas come about. The, because we're dealing with statics, we're dealing with things that don't move. That's, that's the basics of what I want to get down to. Okay, so now that I've got that talked about, let's see if we can actually literally fill in the blanks here for these particular types of formulas. So first, let's start with this one. The sum of forces in the x direction is going to be equal to zero. Well, what are the sum of forces in the x direction? Remember, we've defined x to be positively to the right. Okay, what are our forces acting positively to the right? Well, there's going to be A subscript X. That's one force. It's acting positively to the right. Now it's our job to subtract it from all the forces acting to the left, of which there are none. So I'll just do minus zero is going to be equal to your right-hand side of your equation, which is zero. Okay, now let's do this formula right here. The sum of forces in your y direction is equal to zero. Remember, we've defined y to be positively upwards, right? So let's see, what forces do we have in the positive y direction? Well, we've got two. We've got a subscript y, that's in the positive y direction. We've also got e subscript y as well. Those are two forces acting positively upwards. But this is where the trick comes. We're going to be subtracting it 
from 20 kilonewtons because 20 kilonewtons is acting in the negative y direction, right? So our net force is going to be the sum of forces going up minus the sum of forces going down is going to be equal to your right hand side of your equation, which is zero. Lastly, lastly, we're going to be dealing with the hardest formula to talk about in this particular video, which is the sum of torques equals to zero. Purely by convention, we call the counterclockwise movement positive. That's what we call positive. And this is done by something we call the right hand rule, which I'll probably put a video in in the description. Okay, now in order to get a feel of how to do the sum of torques around any point is equal to zero, let's first re readdress what I mean by a torque. Recall that a torque is really just a force times by a distance. It is units of newton meters in SI units. And I'll just do a quick re um, revision um, of, of a torque because it's actually quite difficult to get your head around. Let's say that we've got this point, which I'll call our axis of rotation. And let's say that we've got a force acting down on this. Right? The torque due around this point is going to be equal to this force times by this perpendicular distance right here. It's this perpendicular distance right here, from here to here. Okay, that's, that's a brief reminder on what torques are. Let's get into the maths of it all. So what are the sum of torques in our diagram that we've got right here? Okay, well, the sum of torques. Are, we get to choose where we want to place our point. So I'm going to choose, for simplicity, to choose point A. I'm going to choose to do the sum of torques around point A. So let's do that. Um, if we were to do that, we'll find out that we've got four potential forces which perform torques on this object. We've got a Y could potentially perform a torque, a X could potentially perform a torque, this 20 kilonewton force, and this EY. So let's see. A Y, A X, sorry, A X, I'll write it down here, A X times by the perpendicular distance from your force towards your axis of rotation is A X times zero. That's because A X the, the perpendicular distance from your force towards your axis of rotation, which in this case is just point A, is just zero. Um, likewise with AY, your torque due to AY is going to be zero. That's because the perpendicular distance from your force towards your axis of rotation A is zero. Right? And this, is, this can really easily be seen because these forces actually pass through our axis of rotation. And, and this should meet your intuition because if they pass through the axis of rotation, they're not going to be trying to turn this truss. Now the tricky part comes. What's the torque due to, 20, to, to this 20 kilonewton force right here acting downwards? What is the torque due to this force just here? Well, using your intuition, how, how about you have a go? Try putting your finger at point A and watching as this 20 kilonewton force attempts to drag down this truss. It's going to be trying to produce a clockwise torque around point A, right? It's going to be trying to produce a clockwise torque, which is negative by convention. So we're going to be subtracting it from our force, 20 kilonewtons, times by our perpendicular distance, which in this case, this is our perpendicular distance from here to here. This is our perpendicular distance, which we found was just one meter. If you recall, each of lengths of these trusses were just one meter. So we're going to be timesing this by one meter. Now let's consider the torque due to our last force, EY. Well, we're just using intuition, we can tell that this force, EY, will be attempting to swing this truss in the positive counterclockwise direction. Just imagine putting your finger at point A and, and EY will have a tendency to try and push this truss in the positive counterclockwise direction, which in other words is saying that the torque it's applying around point A is positive. And, and to quantify how much it's positive by, we go plus E subscript Y times by its perpendicular distance, and its perpendicular distance in this case is literally this distance all the way from here to here, which is going to be 2 meters. I hope you can see that two meters and that's because the length of this bar one meter plus the length of this bar one meter equals two meters okay so let's see that's going to be equal to the right hand side of your equation which is zero all right that was the hardest part of this question um, now it just becomes a matter of algebraic rearrangement to solve for our values firstly 
let me just group the different formulas we've got. We've got this formula right here, we've got this formula right here, and we've got this equation right here. So we've got three unknowns and three equations. This is perfect. We can easily solve this. Well, this one's already solved for us. This shows that ax, a subscript x, must be equal to zero. That's all well and good. Right? We've also got this bottom equation right here, which is just begging us to be solved as well. Notice that a subscript x times 0 is just 0, and a subscript y times 0 is just 0. So we've got one equation and one unknown here. We can easily solve for that, leaving us with e subscript y must be equal to, once you bring the 20 kilonewton force over, 20 kilonewtons times by 1 meter, all divided by two meters. That's once you solve it. Right? The meters cancel off and you're left with your final answer e subscript y e subscript y is 20 divided by 2 which is 10 kilonewtons. That is your answer for e subscript y. So we've got two of our reaction forces. Let's see if we can figure out our third. And we do that by literally plugging in e subscript y into our second equation right here. So let's do that. Let me write that down below. I know it's getting a little bit messy, so I'll just write that equation down below. It's a subscript y plus e subscript y minus 20 kilonewtons must be equal to zero. Once we solve for this, plugging e subscript y back in here, we're left with a subscript y plus 10 kilonewtons must be equal to positive 20 kilonewtons once you bring the 20 kilonewtons to the other side again. Solving for this now, we're left with the final unsurprising solution that a subscript y must be equal to 10 kilonewtons, right? And this should meet your intuition. In case it doesn't, I'm just going to redraw our particular truss again, or at least the free body diagram of our truss. This was our truss. Let's draw the forces on it again now that we know their numerical values. A subscript y we found was 10 kilonewtons. We knew that there was an external force at C of 20 kilonewtons. And we also know that point E, Y, is 10 kilonewtons. There's also a horizontal force of zero, but I'm not going to draw that precisely because it's zero. And this should really meet your intuition here, because this truss is entirely symmetric, so it makes sense for these two forces to be equal. Also, um, <clears throat> notice that the sum of forces in the Y direction can be easily ver um, verified here. 10 plus 10 equals 20. Okay, guys, I hope that makes sense. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to do something called the method of sections. And following that, I'm going to be doing something called the method of joints.